Hi, my name is Vic, and today we're going to build an interactive movie recommendation system where you can type in a movie name and immediately get 10 recommendations for other movies you might want to watch, all in Jupyter Notebook. So we'll start out by downloading data on movies and movie ratings, then we'll build a search engine to actually search through our movies and find the one we, we're looking for. Then we'll build a system to actually give us the recommendations. Let's dive in. By the end of this project, we'll have built an interactive system where we can type in the name of a movie, like Toy Story, and the year it came out, and get tailored recommendations for other movies we might like. So if we like Toy Story, we probably will also like Toy Story 2, A Bug's Life, and Monsters, Inc. So those are some movies we might want to watch. And we can do this for over 60,000 movies. So I'll type in another movie as an example, The Avengers, which came out in 2012. And the system has given us some recommendations here, like Thor or Iron Man 3. So by the end of this project, you'll have a really fun movie recommendation system. So let's go ahead and actually get started on it. And for this project, we'll be using Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab, which we, we need to actually do the interactive widgets. So make sure you're using one of those. And the first thing we'll do is we'll import pandas as PD and we'll read in our movie data. So you can download the movie data here. It's called the Group Lens 25 million data set. Uh, I'll include this link in the description so you can copy paste. And there's two files that we actually need from this, this zip file movies.csv and ratings.csv. So I'm going to go ahead and read in movies.csv. And let's take a quick look at this data set. So this is actually just a listing of a lot of different movie titles. So it's 62,000 rows, and each row is a single movie and the genres that movie is in. So with this data set, we can actually build a movie search engine that when we type in the name of a movie, we'll find the movie that we were looking for. And then the other data set, ratings.csv, is what we'll actually use to build the recommendation engine. So the first thing we'll do is build our search engine. And to do that, we're going to import RE, which is a Python regular expression library. And we'll write a function called clean title which will take a title, a movie title as input, and actually clean that title for us. And the reason we want to clean it is there are some extra characters here that are going to make search difficult. So these parentheses and other special characters in the movie name. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the re sub method to search for characters that fit a certain pattern. And then we're going to remove all of those characters. Okay. So if you're not familiar with regular expressions, what this code is going to do is it's going to search through each title and look for any characters that aren't a space, aren't a digit, or aren't a letter, either a lowercase or an uppercase letter, and it's going to remove them. So it'll remove the parentheses, it'll remove dashes, it'll remove anything along those lines. Now what we can do is we can create a new column in our data frame called clean title. And what we'll do is we'll take our title column and we'll actually use the pandas apply method to call this function. So what this will do is it'll take the title column, go through essentially each item in the column and pass them into this clean title function. Okay. So what we'll have at the end is just a cleaned up set of titles. The next thing we're going to do is actually build our search engine, but I want to explain a couple of things about how we're going to build it first. So basically our titles are stored in a computer as a set of numbers. Computers can't understand characters. They can only understand numbers. So basically what we need to do is convert our titles. So the, the titles of the movies into sets of numbers. So the computer can actually search them effectively and we can find the ones that are most similar to the search term that we enter. 
So for example, let's say we have three movies. One movie is called The, one is called Harry the Potter, the other is called The Harry. So what we would do is build what's called a term frequency matrix. So each column would be a unique term across these titles. So there's three unique words in these titles, the, Harry, and Potter. So we end up with three columns. And it basically, you go through each row, and if the word occurs in the title, you put a one in the column. If it doesn't, you put a zero in the column. So in this case, we have a one for the, and zeros for Harry and Potter. In the case of Harry the Potter, we have ones for all the columns and so on. Then what we do is we do something called inverse document frequency, which I'm not gonna get into too much, but basically this helps the search engine find terms that are unique. So a term like the isn't that unique because it occurs in lots of different movie titles and isn't gonna help you build the search engine. But something like Harry or Potter occur in way fewer movie titles and can be actually be informative. And what we get at the end are, is essentially a vector for each movie. So a set of numbers that describes that movie title. Then what happens is let's say we wanna run a search. Let's say we want to, we type in Harry Potter into our search box. So then what the computer does is it turns the title that we enter into the search box into a set of numbers. And then it compares that set of numbers with all of the titles that we already have in our data. And it finds which ones are the most similar. So these would be the similarity scores. And in this case, the middle title would be the most similar. So that would be the result that's returned by our search engine. So this is exactly what we're gonna do in order to build our search engine. And luckily, we're not gonna to have to do all of that math ourselves. We're going to be able to import from a library called scikit-learn, which is a Python machine learning library. We'll be able to import something called a TF-IDF vectorizer, which will automatically do everything I just showed you, turning titles into numbers. So we'll go ahead and import that and then we will turn it into, or sorry, we'll initialize our class and we'll pass in something called ngram range. So what this parameter does is it, instead of just looking at individual words in the title, it also is going to look at what are called ngrams. So groups of two words that are consecutive. So instead of just looking at Toy Story and 1995, it's also gonna look at Toy Story together and Story 1995 together. So this just makes our search a little bit more accurate. And then what we do is we actually use this vectorizer to turn our set of, of titles into a matrix, so sets of numbers. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. Might take a little bit, okay. And the next thing we need to do is actually compute the similarity between a term that we enter. So if we, if we were searching for Harry Potter and all of the movies in our list. So to do this, we're gonna use something called cosine similarity, which is handily implemented in scikit-learn. So we don't need to implement it ourselves. So the cosine similarity function, and we're also gonna import NumPy as MP. So we'll write a function called search, which takes a search term in. And in this case, the term is a title that we want to search for. The first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll go ahead and clean the title that we entered in the same way that we cleaned the, the titles earlier. Then we'll actually use the vectorizer to turn the search term that we entered into a set of numbers. So we'll run transform. Actually, I'll get rid of the function part for now so we can actually just run this and see what's happening. Let's say we're searching for Harry Potter. Okay, let's take a look at query vec. So we see we have a sparse matrix here and it's basically just turned the term that we entered into a set of numbers. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the similarity between our search term and all of the titles in our data. And we're gonna use cosine similarity to do that. So we'll run cosine similarity on query vec and tf-idf, and we will flatten the results. 
So what this is going to do is compare our query term to each of the titles that we have in our data set, each of the clean titles, and it will return how similar our title is to each of those titles. Okay, so we can go ahead and take a look at similarity. This is a NumPy vector, and the first title was Toy Story, so there's actually no similarity between Toy Story and Harry Potter, Jumanji, etc. If we change our title, let's say we want to search for, let's search for Exhale 1995. Actually, that won't search for Men 1995. Let's say this is our search term. And we can see this is now more similar to some of our results. So we entered 1995. So that's actually similar to the first title because that had 1995 in it. Same for Jumanji. And it is very similar to this because men 1995 is, is an exact phrase that is in grumpier old men. So that, that's just calculating the similarity between our search term and the titles. The next thing we need to do is we need to find the titles that have the greatest similarity to our search term. So in order to do that, we're going to use NumPy arg partition, and we're going to pass in our similarity data and we are going to pass in negative five. And what this will do is find the five most similar titles to, to, what, to our search term. And then we actually need to get from our, our indices. So these the indices, actually, we'll see what indices is right here. So indices is going to give us the, the indices in our vector of the five most similar search terms. And then what we need to do is actually index our movies data by these indices to actually get the titles that we care about. Okay. So let's take a look at this. So this gives us the five movies that are most similar to men 1995. All right. And then what we need to do is actually reverse this. I'm actually going to call this toy story to give us a slightly better set of results here. Okay, so we can see we've searched for Toy Story 1995 and it's given us the most similar titles, Toy Story 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then what we need to do is actually type in this. What this is going to do is it's going to reverse the results because the most similar result is actually last in our list now. So we need it to be first and we only want one result, right? We don't need the five most similar movies. We just need the most similar movie. So let's go ahead and run this. And we can see that this will return our most similar movie at the top. Okay. So let's turn this back into a function. And the next thing we're going to do is going to be very cool. We're going to build the interactive Jupyter Notebook widget where we can actually type in the name of a movie and see the search results in Jupyter Notebook. So in order to do that, we need to import something called a IPython widget. And widgets are just little interactive things we can embed into notebooks that let us enter input and then use that input. We also need to import, import from IPython.display, we need to import display. Display is a function you can use to actually show different things as output from Jupyter cells. All right. And then we need to create a widget. So we're going to create a input widget, which is a text widget. And our default value is going to be Toy Story. And then our description is going to be movie title. We want people to enter their movie title here. And it will be enabled. I actually don't know if you need this, but uh, I'll leave it in. Why not? Okay, so what we can do now is we can actually show our movie input. So we now have this, this text box. It doesn't do anything yet, right? If you type any, something into this box, it's, it doesn't do anything. But we have the box. Very cool. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll actually make this box useful. So to make it useful, we have to, actually have to hook it up to something called an output widget. So when you enter something into this input widget, it will then do some, 
we'll, we'll then write a function that does some processing. So in this case, it'll actually search our data set and then put the results into an output widget. So let's go ahead and create an output widget. And that's going to be called movie list. And then we're going to write a function called on type. So this function is going to be called whenever we type something into this box. And what we'll say is with our output widget, first thing we'll do is we will clear our output widget. So we just remove anything that is in there. Then we'll grab our title from our input. So our input will, will be a dictionary and the new field will give us the new value that was entered into the input. And then what we'll say, if the length of the title is greater than five, display search title. Okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to search our set of titles for the title, and then it's actually going to display it into our output widget, which is movie list. Okay. This isn't going to do anything yet because we need to hook up the input widget to the on type function. All right. I'm actually going to delete this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say movie input dot observe on type. So whenever something happens with the movie input, whenever we type something in, it is going to call this on type method. And there are different types of events you can observe, but we're going to observe the value event. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just it's a specific type of, of widget event. And when that specific event is called, we are actually going to run this function. Okay. And then we need to display both of our outputs. So we're going to display movie input uh, and movie list. So this will actually show both of the widgets. So let's go ahead and run this. Now, when we type, it actually is searching and showing the results below. So we can search for Avengers and it is not updating. Okay. So this is happening because of something I did before I hard coded the title. So I'm just going to remove this hard coding and that will enable us to be able to use any title that we enter. So we'll type in the Avengers and it will actually search for the Avengers now. And if we type in 2012, it actually shows the Avengers 2012 as the first result. the Hulk or just Hulk. So you can see that the search engine will search through our set of movies. So we've finished the first half of what we need to do. The second half is the more exciting half, which is the actual recommendation system. Although this is pretty exciting. I, I like uh, Jupyter widgets a lot. They're pretty fun. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is actually find movies that are similar to our to, to a movie that we liked. So if we liked a specific movie, we can search for it and get recommendations. So in order to do this, we are going to need to read in our ratings.csv file, uh, which is part of the files that you downloaded with the movie lens 25 million data set. So let's go ahead and take a look at this ratings. Actually, let's just take a look at ratings. Okay. And we can see that we, we have a movie ID and a rating. So not a ton of data here, but essentially each user has rated a movie and we can see how they rated that movie. All right. And then let's take a look at D types here just to see the data types of ratings. And we can see these are all integers or floats, which is great. So what we're going to do here is we're going to find all of the users who also liked the movie that we type in. So if we type the Hulk in here. We want to find all of the users who also liked the movie Hulk. And then we want to find the other movies they liked, because those are probably going to be good recommendations for us, right? People who liked the same movie as us, what else did they like? Okay. So let's go ahead and actually create that recommendation system. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to find the users who also liked the same movie as us. So we're going to call this similar users and their similar users are two things. So they're, they are users who liked the same movie as us. So in this case, actually, let me just hard code a movie ID. Uh, let me hard code the movie ID for toy story. 
Okay. So the movie ID for Toy Story is one. So let me say movie ID equals one. So we're going to find anyone who liked Toy Story. And what we also need to do, sorry. So this is finding anyone who watched Toy Story in our ratings. We also need to find anyone who liked it. So if they liked it, let's assume they gave it a rating greater than or equal to, let's just say greater than or equal to five. So it's some anyone who liked Toy Story and gave it a five out of five. So these are users who have similar taste in movies to us. Then we're going to find their user ID. And we're only going to take unique user IDs. Let's run that. Okay. So this gives us our set of people who like the same movie as us, which is just a array. Now we need to find the other movies that they liked. So what this is going to be called is similar user Rex. And this is going to be ratings, ratings user ID that is in similar users. So this is going to find anyone who is similar to us in that they watched the same movie and liked the same movie as us. We also need them. We also want to find any movies they rated a five star. Did I miss a, yes, okay, missed parentheses. Okay, I originally had this at greater than four. Yeah, let's just do greater than four. Greater than or equal to five doesn't make much sense because five is the highest rating you can have. Okay. All right. So this is finding all of the users, all of the movies, users who are similar to us also liked. Similar user Rex. Let's take a look at that. All right. So we can see we now have a bunch of different movies that users who, who like the same movie as us also rated a five. And what we need here is actually the movie ID because that's what's joining these two data sets. So you'll notice there's a movie ID in ratings. There's also a movie ID in the movies data set. So this is what's going to help us get from just the rating to the title is the movie ID. Okay. So we now, we now have these similar user recommendations. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to find only the movies that greater than 10% of the users who are similar to us liked. So this, if we only look at movies that people similar to us rated five stars, we're going to get a lot of recommendations and we want to narrow that down. So we're going to look for movies that 10% or more of the users who are similar to us also liked. So the first thing we'll do is we'll say similar user rex dot value counts. So what this does is it counts up how many times each movie appears in our particular data set. There you go. Okay. Run this again. All right. So we can see the movie with ID one appears uh, 13,000 times. The movie with ID 318 appears 5,500 times and so on. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to find only the movies that had greater than 10%. So first let's convert this into a percentage by dividing by the number of users. Okay, so we can see 100% of users recommended this movie, 41% recommended this movie, and so on. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to say only take the ones that are greater than 10%. All right. So this gives us the movies where that were greater than 10% liked. All right. Okay. So we now have a set of 92 movies. I just missed the assignment here. So I had to add that back in. Sometimes when I'm trying to demonstrate and show the value of something, I don't assign it back to a variable, but sometimes I have to go back and redo that. Okay. So we now have 92 movies that users who are similar to us liked at a certain threshold. All right. So the next thing we need to do is some of these movies are movies that are specific to our niche. So they're movies that people like us liked more than, than they, than they just generally liked movies. So what we need to find is what percentage of just 
regular people outside of our set of people similar to us like these movies. Because what we want are movies that people people similar to us like, and only those those folks like more than just an average person would like. For example, if you ask someone if they like Toy Story, most people like Toy Story, right? So that means that users similar to you will probably also like Toy Story, but they don't like Toy Story because their interests are similar to yours. They like Toy Story because everybody likes Toy Story. You wanna find the movies that define kind of the similarity to the movie you like. So if someone likes the Avengers, you wanna find other movies they like that are similar to the Avengers. You don't just want all of the movies they like because they probably like a lot of random movies that don't really have anything to do with the Avengers. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna find how much all of the users in our data set like these movies. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say ratings, ratings movie dot is in similar user rex. So we're essentially finding anyone who has rated a movie that is in our uh, set of recommended movies dot index. And then we're also going to find people who have rated them highly. All right, uh, make sure I got all my parentheses in the right spot. All right, ratings, movie ID. Okay, so all users gives us all of the users who have watched all of the ratings and all of the users for the movies in our set. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is find the movies that this set of users, so all of the users who've also watched. So this is all of the users who have watched movies that were recommended to us. So these movies in this set of 92. So the next thing we need to do is find, so we're finding what percentage of all users recommend each of these movies. So we're gonna create a data frame called all user recs. And this is gonna be all users movie ID dot value counts divided by len all users user ID dot unique. Okay, what is this doing? So this is finding the percentage of all users who recommended these movies that are in similar user recs. So what we want is movies that are a high percentage here. So users that are similar to us really like that movie and, or sorry, that are a higher percentage here than in the other set. So if 100% of, of all users like Toy Story and 100% of users similar to us like Toy Story, Toy Story is probably not a great recommendation if you watch The Avengers. Because even though Toy Story is highly recommended, everybody likes it. What you want is everyone who liked The Avengers rated Thor very highly. 100% of people liked the movie Thor. But of all of the users who watched Thor, only 40% liked it. You want movies that are, have a big differential in how they're recommended between people similar to you who have similar tastes to you versus just the general set of everybody. So that's what we're doing. So let's go ahead and take a look at all user recs. And this gives us basically the percentage of all users who liked these movies. And what we do now is essentially compare the percentages. And to do that, we're going to use the pandas concatenate method to combine these two series together. So each series will essentially be a column. And then we will name our columns similar and all. Okay. Okay. Pluralization, always the hardest thing to do. <laughs> all right. 
So this gives us each of the movies that were recommended to us and how much users who are similar to us like them and how much just the average person like them. So we want movies that have a big difference between these two numbers. Okay. So the next thing we'll do is we'll create a score, which is just dividing one by the other. This is just finding the ratio between the percentages. And then we'll sort these recommendations. Scroll up. Okay, and we'll use the pandas sort value method to sort values method to do this. So we'll sort values on score. Ascending equals false. So the biggest values will be at the beginning. All right, so we can see the score is the ratio between how much users similar to us like the movie and how much just the average user liked the movie. And that gives us our score. So that the score, the higher the score, the, the better the recommendation is. And then what we'll do is we'll take our top 10 recommendations and we'll merge that with our movies data so we can actually get the titles of these movies. And we'll say left index equals true. So for rec percentages, the index is the movie ID. So we're saying use the index and then merge that on the right with, with uh, the movie ID from the movies data set. Okay, so let's run that. And then we can see that we now have added the title to our recommendations. So if we watch Toy Story, these are our recommendations. Toy Story 2, A Bug's Life, Aladdin, etc., which are pretty good recommendations. All right, so now what we need to do is put all of this into a function. I'm gonna be doing a lot of copying and pasting here because you probably don't wanna watch me type all this code out again. It's a lot. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find users similar to us. This is the same code we wrote earlier. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to find all of the users and uh, find their recommendations. space this out to the same sections we used above. So this is finding our recommendations from users similar to us. This is adjusting. So we only have recommendations where over 10% of users recommended that movie. This is finding how common the recommendations were among all of the users. And then finally, we are creating our score. So we're first concatenating the two, then we're generating our score and then we're sorting our score. And then finally, we're returning our merged score. So this is just taking the top 10 recommendations, merging it with our movies data set. And then I added a little bit of code here to only select the three columns that we need, right? We don't need the rest of these columns. Okay, so that is our find similar movies function, just wrapping up everything that we did into one function. All right, now we are able to do the final part, which is building the widget that will do this automatically. So we can type in a movie title and we will get recommendations. So actually I already imported this. So I don't need to do that again. What we're gonna say is movie input name is widgets.txt. This is similar to what we did before where we're just creating an input widget and the initial value is going to be Toy Story. And the description, we're gonna just say equals movie title. Disabled equals false. Okay. So we've create, we're creating our input. Then we're creating our output widget. create our output widget. Then what we do is we create our on type function, same as before, but slightly different. First thing we do is clear our output. Recommendation list dot clear output. 
then we'll grab our title from the input widget. And then we'll say, if the length of our title is greater than five, then go ahead and do actually run the search. So the first thing we'll do is we'll search for the title that was typed in. So we'll use our search function from earlier. Then we'll extract the movie ID. And if you'll remember, the result that had the highest confidence was the first row. So we're going to take the first row and then grab the movie ID. And then we're going to run find similar movies, passing in movie ID. And then we're going to display this because the output of find similar movies is a data frame. We can actually display that data frame. Okay, now we need to actually observe our movie input. Observe on type names equals value, similar to what we did before. And then finally, we need to display our widget. All right, so let's go ahead and run this movie name. I hate it when I type the wrong variable name. Okay, so we now have a text box and let's let's try this out. So let's type in Toy Story 1995. Let's see what we get. So we get those recommendations. Let's type in the Avengers 2012. See what we get here. We get some recommendations also. We can type in Moonlight, which is uh, another movie that, that we get recommendations for. And we can continue here. So you can actually use this to plan what movie you're gonna watch tonight, and hopefully you get a good recommendation. So we came really far in this project. We started out by reading in some data, and then we cleaned up our titles and built a search engine, which we used to search movie titles. Then we read in our ratings data and created a recommendation engine to actually recommend us movies based on a movie that we had watched before. So we now have a movie search engine and recommendation engine, which is amazing. And if you want to continue this, there are some next steps you can try. So you can certainly try improving the quality of the recommendations by tweaking some of these parameters and how things are working here. You can also try using the genres. So you could potentially add a second input box to ask, okay, what genre do you want the recommendations to be in? And try to, try to only filter the results to that genre. Or you could try to use the genres to improve the actual recommendation engine. Another thing you can do is this data set, if you saw, there are some files with tags and other metadata about the movies. And you can certainly try to use that metadata to improve your recommendations as well. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and thanks for watching.